Sitting in my ninth grade science class, my teacher asked us all the significance of the day's date, September 9th, 1999. Someone behind me immediately spoke up to state that Sega's Dreamcast system was being released on this historic day. A majority of the class, including yours truly, agreed that today was monumental because of Sega's latest and unknowingly final console. We gamers, both hardcore and fringe, didn't understand what was on the horizon thanks to the Dreamcast release. A year after the Sega console hit store shelves in America, Western gamers were treated with something completely different than anything else on a system that allowed players to communicate with fish featuring human faces, Shinmu. Originally appearing to be a 3D brawler set in Japan, Shinmu proved to be so much more. Its sequel released on both the Dreamcast and the original Xbox, expanding upon the world, story, and innovative gameplay options that would influence so many games in the generations to come. Last year saw the release of an HD port of both entries, setting the stage for the long-awaited third iteration that only came thanks to dedicated fans putting forth the money on a wing and a prayer that Ryo Hazuki's journey would continue. Taking control of Ryo Hazuki, the son of a martial artist slain by the mysterious Lan Di, to attain a sacred mirror, the player is immediately thrust into an expanded version of the village Hazuki found himself inside at the end of Shenmue 2, Balu. In this rather small area featuring adults and kids running around completing their daily task, including farming and spending money on capsule toys respectively, the player is introduced to the plethora of things to do alongside completing the main story, like gambling at the local bazaar, training Hazuki's kung fu ability at the temple, and fishing. There are also side quests that will randomly pop up, usually connected to Ryo, walking by a particular character, like a child hoping to own a soccer ball. After 20 plus hours, Ryo discovered that his journey must continue after I spent too much time grinding for money, skills, and passive abilities, as well as playing any side quest I was able to discover. But right now it feels best to just leave well enough alone. For 20 years, the Shinmu franchise has been credited for being one of the most innovative games associated with gaming's sixth generation. The story begins simply, yet horrifically, as Ryo Hazuki discovers the dojo he trains at and lives beside is being invaded by a menacing, almost stereotypical martial artist, Lan Di, who is in search for a mythical mirror that apparently is possessed by Ryo's father. When Ryo's dad refuses to give up the mirror, Lan Di slays him in cold blood, leading Ryo on a search for answers and revenge. Most games with an initial narrative like the one in Shinmu would feature the player entering an open world ready to kick butt and take names. While Ryo can kick butt and discover many names, the way he goes about succeeding in his quest turns what could have been a 3D brawler into a point and click adventure with some awkward fights mixed in where Ryo either succeeds in grand fashion or gets beaten down with ease. Ryo will go around two towns asking townspeople if they can provide any information about whatever his main goal is at the time. Ryo will be hoofing it around his environments much to the chagrin of the player as there is no overview map or fast travel system without returning to Ryo's home base in Balu a function that completely goes away with the second town, Nayau. Unfortunately, there will be times when figuring out what to do next will force the player to ask every person in talking distance or like several missions featuring the first person investigation mode, opening dozens of drawers and cabinets, with each opening being awkwardly slow. This moving around the world of Shenmue 3 is made worse because of the fact Ryo's stamina and health are connected, with them going down the more Ryo moves around. And if Hazuki is standing still, his health will continuously drain unless Ryo eats something. This function is definitely an annoying factor when trying to save back some money for a key item connected to the story or the player steps into a fight with little to no health 
without a pre-fight warning, like the one given when Ryo wants to fight at a dojo. Getting money is definitely a blessing and a curse. Early in the game, it is tedious to earn cash or yuan, thanks to a variety of options including gambling and chopping wood. The money grind can get really annoying later in the game for story reasons, and it's unfortunate how much grinding must be utilized to progress the plot. This problem is mostly alleviated here with certain events offering fast forward or skip options, so Ryo can immediately move to the next scene or confrontation. Like its predecessors, Shinmu 3 doesn't play into the idea of fast paced gameplay by featuring an archaic combat system. One of the game's biggest flaws is the moment Ryo has to throw hands and feet against one, or heaven forbid, more than two opponents thanks to the game's cycling targeting system, usually focusing on the wrong adversary. Shinmu 3 is a poor man's 3D fighter a la Virtual Fighter. By hitting certain button combinations in their proper sequences will allow for Ryo to throw kicks, punches, and combinations with the left trigger also being responsible for Hazuki blocking. The block button can also parry incoming attacks if the player hits it at the right time, instead of holding down the button. Blocking has a meter attached to it that drains with each attack from an enemy that temporarily disables the function if the bar completely depletes. Throwing options have been removed for some reason. Sadly, the combat is as stiff as what was seen in the first two entries, with terrible hitboxes, surprising moments where counters and parries don't work, and enemies having temporary invincibility or great blocking depending on their skill level. Ryo 2 has skill levels that can be upgraded, attack, endurance, and kung fu. Playing through some of the rather mundane and boring minigames, like timed one button punch sequences or sparring at the local dojo, will boost both Ryo's skills and whatever maneuver hasn't reached its maximum level. Depending on the enemies, the player may discover that Ryo is underpowered without any indication as to how much stronger said opponent is, until Hazuki is on the ground and being told his kung fu isn't up to par. It doesn't matter if the player controls Ryo better than the opposing AI in a fight. If that enemy has higher kung fu than Ryo, two or three solid strikes will deplete Hazuki's health. While training to get Ryo better for a fight is very Shinmu, it becomes obnoxious when these your kung fu is lacking messages appear with almost every fight that progresses the story, though there's not much of a story in the first place. After Shinmu 2's big revelation that would stay unresolved for 18 years until this game's release, three plods along with a narrative that barely accomplishes anything. The major story beats and moments that came from Shinmu 2 felt grand and deserving. A majority of the time after 1's plot provided what many would only call a teaser for what the developers had in mind for its future installments. Shinmu 2 from a narrative perspective felt like a proper step forward. 3, however, barely capitalizes on its direct sequel's pacing with a final act that leaves it open for a fourth game that isn't guaranteed to even happen. Beyond the disappointing cliffhanger is a lack of character development for people like the quiet girl Ryo met at the end of Shinmu 2 and Shinoa, or even some of the new characters introduced, like a shrine maiden who's given one introductory scene and treated by the game's end as if she's become a big part of Ryo's world. The mysterious villains, be it Lan Di or the thugs Ryo is constantly searching for, too barely get any type of characterization. Like the aforementioned many games available for both making money and just for the sheer enjoyment, are also the return of quick time events. While most QTEs come at the player rather quickly, they are incredibly forgiving with the checkpoints, so the player isn't stuck at the same spot for too long with some QTE failures actually being incredibly fun to watch play out. The graphics are definitely an upgrade compared to the original two games, but the stiff animations and almost toy animation style facial designs can be off-putting compared to the more polished designs like that of Rio's, though the landscapes usually look phenomenal. From a voice acting perspective, it sounds like something from a game presented 20 years ago. Some actors do a remarkable and appropriate job, but a majority of the conversations are incredibly broken and edited badly together with odd pauses and even abrupt endings that forces the player to speak to an NPC again to ask Rio's question. Technically, the game does suffer from frame rate drops, texture and characters popping in, 
and extensive loading screens like what came with this HD counterpart. Considering what is usually loading, including 20 second cutscenes, will still produce a lengthy loading screen. Shenmue 3 delivers on the nostalgia the franchise has now become associated with, but there are some definite gameplay issues that ruin the overall enjoyment, including an underwhelming combat system, the joining of Ryo's health and stamina, and a narrative that barely advances the overall story. No matter if it wants players to embrace a game rooted in a different time or not, it's very hard to believe fans both new and old will be wholly satisfied with Ryo Hazuki's latest journey. While an innovative franchise almost two decades ago, the core mechanics that made Shinmu so unique in 1999 hasn't aged well. Sporting modified gameplay implementations, Shinmu 3 feels more like Shinmu 1.5 instead of a second sequel sporting a more fleshed out plot and gameplay options. The combat can become tedious as does making money through various means. But the biggest disappointment is the lack of story progression, even with the aforementioned knowledge of this not being the overall story's end. Dedicated Shinmu fans will mostly enjoy this offering and will probably ignore a majority of the game's shortcomings. The intrigued should play the HD collection beforehand for both an understanding of the story and what to expect from the gameplay. And those who have experienced the HD collection in full should know that this iteration isn't that much more unique. No matter what, Shinmu 3 isn't something that feels like it's worth its extensive weight, but nothing rarely is. Unless all you are looking for in a game is a drunkard somehow speaking perfectly while drowning himself in 50 year old alcohol. Him. I remember waiting near the bridge with Ye and Su to catch the envoy's arrival. Try catching 10 of those chickens. Seriously? If you don't want to. N no, I'll do it. I just have to catch them, right? You're in for a rough day today. 